Hello, this is Dr. J here with a quick mini update for my Commander X16 game development activities. If you happen to hear any rustling in the background or anything, don't be alarmed. It's just my cat jumping all over my furniture. Anyway, at the end of the last video, I said that it would probably be a while until there was another major update because I had fallen behind on some other things I needed to do because I'd been concentrating so hard on Commander X16 development. And uh, that's certainly been true. Okay, the cat almost just jumped on my head and killed me. Good job, girl. And work has been far more mentally draining and exhausting than normal lately, which has also contributed to me not getting a whole lot done in the way of uh, new Commander X16 development. That said, I do hope to uh, start work on my first major game idea relatively soon, start work on it in earnest. And in the meantime, uh, just so that I have a little something to post in the interim while I uh, start really getting hard at work on it, I thought I would just discuss a little bit of preliminaries about what the game is that I'm going to be working on. So I have, in the past, worked on a, an engine for a grid-based grid first-person dungeon crawler. Uh, there's a lot of classic old-school games that fit into this genre, like Wizardry and Might and Magic being two of the luminaries of the genre. Eye of the Beholder is another big one. And there's still a few that get made in the more modern era, like the uh, Japanese-made Etrian Odyssey series. And there have been some Japanese-originated uh, new wizardry titles in the uh, relatively recent past as well. But it's, these days, it's mostly Japan keeping the genre alive. Uh, there's, you know, a few new Western ones that get made, like uh, Legend of Grimrock. In general, uh, these days, it's nonetheless a very niche game genre. But it's one that I like quite a bit. I have a real soft spot for it. And so that's the first game that I'm going to be working on. And I should be showing on screen about now uh, some footage from the game engine that I made for a grid-based first-person dungeon crawler, uh, which I called Darkness Never Dies. And I put together a complete demo for it. And the game engine is 99% complete. I could use it to fairly easily start making a, uh, a complete game right now. Because like I said, the engine itself is essentially done. Uh, and there's not really any major reason not to, except that, as with so many things, I think that this might be a genre that potentially could be better appreciated if it's made on actual retro hardware, given that it's sort of an inherently very retro genre. And so I've decided to essentially take my engine and port it onto the Commander X16 using my Exist16 library, which, to be clear, is a complete rewrite from scratch. And obviously is also going to be more primitive than what you're seeing here, because even though I made the game to be fairly retro style, nonetheless what you're seeing on screen is obviously far too advanced to, um, to run on the Commander X16. I mean, you'd probably need about a, at least a PlayStation 1, if not even PlayStation 2 era of, uh, of hardware to be able to run the engine that I put together smoothly. So 8-bit um, processor is just way too primitive. So, uh, there's a number of things that I'm going to have to do to translate this, and gameplay-wise, I don't think I'm going to have to simplify much of anything. But graphically, I'm going to have to do quite a bit of simplification in order to get it to work on the Commander X16. In particular, the biggest thing is, obviously, the Darkness Never Dies engine is a true 3D engine that's running with uh, perspective projection using matrices, it's real 3D, and you have smooth rotation and smooth movement and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, technically, you could do a little bit of ultra-primitive 3D on the Commander X16 on a 6502 processor. It, it was done back in the day. There were some incredibly primitive 3D games that were made on 8 and 16-bit systems. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not really going to try to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to reduce it to the point where I only have a single perspective that I need to render, which is just going to be the perspective where you are in, sitting in the center of a cell, or rather standing in the center of a cell, looking at a perfectly orthogonal 90 degree angle. 
And you could be looking in four directions, north, south, east, or west, but there's not really going to be any alternate angles that uh, I'm going to need to render, and I'm not going to have any sort of transition-y movement where you're moving between one cell and the next. It's just going to be very discrete movement from cell to cell, rotating at exactly 90 degree increments, which is uh, also exactly how Volta the Vindicator works in um, on the Commander X-16. So the perspective is going to be very, fairly similar to that. One important difference, though, is in Volta the Vindicator, the uh, perspective view of the dungeon takes up the entire screen, which necessitates Volta the Vindicator being displayed in bitmap mode. Now, I want to use my Exist 16 engine, which doesn't support bitmap mode, so I am going to be using sprites and tiles. And the way that I'm going to do that is my... Uh, view isn't going to take up the entire screen. If you look at other games, such as Warriors of the Eternal Sun on the Sega Genesis, which was a fantastic RPG and one of my favorite games ever, um, that sort of had two gameplay modes. One was a uh, sort of isometric overhead perspective where you were moving overland, and the other was a first-person grid-based dungeon crawl perspective. And Warriors of the Eternal Sun, and it was not unique in this at all. There were a lot of other games of that approximate era that did the same thing. The first-person perspective view didn't take up the whole screen. It only took up part of it in the corner, and the rest of the screen was taken up by UI stuff, like portraits and stats of your characters, and a text display for showing narrative text and uh, potentially battle information, like when you cast a spell and do damage and that sort of thing. And here, assuming that I edited the video correctly after recording this audio, I should be displaying a sort of mock-up I've done of what my main game screen is going to look like. And as you can see, it's very similar to the Warriors of the Eternal Sun game view with the character portraits and some basic stats on the right side, the uh, area for text in the lower left, and then the actual perspective view is just going to take up a window in the upper left corner of the screen. Because my perspective view isn't going to take up the whole screen, that should mean that I can get away with essentially rendering it using sprites and not having to go into bitmap mode and thus be able to take advantage of all the nice functionality that I wrote for my Exist 16 library. Even though actually this game idea, there's a lot of stuff the Exist 16 library does that my first game idea here isn't even going to need. But that's okay, because I do have future game ideas that will use all the Exist 16 functionality. But anyway, the essential way that I'm thinking of doing it is like this. I've essentially uh, figured out the number of cells in front of the player that are going to need to be rendered, and which cells those will be, and figured out which coordinates on the screen those are going to need to occupy from the first person perspective view. And so what I can do is I can create essentially a number of textures, wall and floor textures, and then the, um, the ceiling is probably actually gonna be done a little bit differently, but I'll leave that explanation for another day. But wall and floor textures that I can just make quite small, 16 by 16 uh, pixel images, I think will be plenty sufficient for this. And then either using some very simple math and loops, and not like full-on three-dimensional matrices or, God forbid, quaternions, or any of the things that typically get used for doing true three-dimensional rendering, but rather, like I said, just some very simplistic transformational math, or even alternatively, just some hard-coded transformation coordinates, I can take these textures and convert them into uh, the what they would look like in a perspective view when shown from kind of a first-person, three-dimensional point of view. And if I do it correctly, hopefully, the rendering will be able to be done quickly enough that there's not an especially noticeable delay from the player's point of view, and then just re-render the scene each time the player either takes a step forward or does a 90-degree rotation to the right or left. And this is sort of the only aspect of my game idea that is a little up in the air, that I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to get it to work efficiently enough. 
So when I start actual code implementation for the Commander X16 port of my first person dungeon crawler, this is definitely the first thing that I'm going to be tackling is rendering this first person perspective and transforming a few small surface textures into the uh, into what they'll look like from this pers first person perspective view. That's going to be the very first thing that I do so that if for whatever reason I can't get it working, and I should be able to because we've already seen that it obviously can work from Vault of the Vindicator, that proved it. But you know, if for whatever reason I just can't get it working, since this is the very first thing that I will be attempting, I won't have to dump a whole lot of effort into it. Uh, you know, fail fast is the philosophy. Fail quickly if you're going to fail. And then I can pivot to either uh, sort of changing my RPG game idea and maybe switching to an overhead perspective or something. Maybe just falling back to my second game idea or, you know, something like that. And if that happens, I guess I would end up uh, reserving my first person dungeon crawler game idea for a more modern, my more modern engine that already works after all. But I don't think that's likely to be necessary. I, I think the chances are pretty high that I should be able to get this working. And then after that, there's essentially no doubt that every other element of the game that needs to work, that I can get to work uh, efficiently enough. And what I would probably work on next is not anything especially difficult, but what in my opinion would be definitely the most tedious part of getting the game working, and that's the menus. Any kind of RPG has a whole lot of menu systems, or um, I guess not really menu systems, but just menus that you need to implement. Inventory menus, status menus, level up menus, item shop menus, like just all kinds of stuff. Uh, it's, for me, a really boring part of developing games is making the menus, that's, that's just not fun. But it's completely necessary, so you just kind of got to suck it up and get through it. Now, for my modern version of this first-person dungeon crawler game engine, uh, I what I did was I basically made an almost sort of HTML-like uh, format, my own file format, uh, complete with support for uh, function callbacks, so that I could kind of code my menus using my own little meta language and make it a lot easier and take a lot of the tedium out of it. While I probably could implement something like that on the X16 as well, I feel like net, that would actually cost more effort in re-implementing my HTML-like language than I would save versus just kind of hard coding it or taking a more hard coding sort of approach. Now, I might sort of implement a much simpler format that I can use to uh, support menus. Maybe, maybe essentially have a list of items to show on the screen, their logical relationship to each other, so that we, uh, how you switch between them when you hit buttons on the D-pad, the text for those items, and then maybe use function pointers to have a function callback for each one, but just have a much more primitive format for supporting the menus than what I used for my more modern game engine. And then once I get that off the ground, use that to hopefully make the menus more quickly than if I just purely hard coded all of them. Uh, so that's gonna be my first two action items, getting the first person perspective nailed down, proving that it works, making sure it's efficient enough, because that's the hardest part. And after that, the most tedious part, namely the menus. And after that, the rest of the development and porting the game engine should both go faster and be more fun, I'm hoping. And I will provide updates as I get major components of the game system working. So that's what I'm going to be working on. It's probably going to be a fairly long delay before my next update video again, because I'm still fairly busy and very tired from work lately, and there's you know, just a lot of work to do to get it off the ground before I'll have anything I can really show off. That almost concludes this little mini update. I guess the final thing that I'll mention is my game is going to need a working title. And its final title might end up being Darkness Never Dies Again. There's nothing wrong with that title. And to my knowledge, there's not any like major commercial games that already use it or anything. So I, th I think it's available. 
But while it's not a bad title, I'm not 100% sold on it either, so there's still room for the title to potentially change. And in the meantime, I should just have a consistent working title I can refer to it by until I've finalized what the game's real title is going to be. And I'm thinking the working title, until I come up with what the real one will be, is going to be Dungeon Commander. Just because it's a dungeon crawler on the Commander X16, hence Dungeon Commander. So not, not exactly original or creative, but it, it kind of shows what the intent of the game is, Dungeon Crawler on the Commander X16, and it's kind of catchy to say, I think. Dungeon Commander. It kind of rolls off the tongue. It is a little misleading because it kind of sounds like a fantasy strategy game with the word Commander in the title, and <laughs> that's not what it is at all. And so that's why it's almost certainly not going to be the game's final title, but henceforth... Until the actual title is finalized, the working title that I will be referring to it by shall be Dungeon Commander. So this is Dr. J signing off with this little mini update, hopefully getting to work on Dungeon Commander soon. So I'll be seeing you in a while for some more retro game development goodness. And until then, everybody have a great day, week, month, or however long it is until I speak with you again. Goodbye for now.